Good morning, homesteaders, gardeners, and cooks. My name is Jennifer. Welcome to Miles Away Farm. Welcome to the end of June, beginning of July garden tour. We are currently standing in what we refer to as the perennial garden, which is no longer really a perennial garden. It's where we have raised beds and also some fruit trees and things, which are the perennials. I'm standing at the far north end right now. This is my home pepper bed. I have in here shishito peppers, cubanelle peppers, bell peppers, and carmen, which is a sweet bullhorn style pepper. And you can see we've got some very nice cubanelles setting. Cubanelle is similar to a bell pepper, slightly different flavor, absolutely delicious. On the end, we have two different kinds of eggplant. So the one towards me is a Japanese long and skinny eggplant, and the ones on the far side are Rosa Bianca, so a white and pink eggplant. There's a lovely bumblebee over there pollinating the eggplant flowers, which is awesome. I see bees in the peppers as well. And then Carmen, you can see, is also coming along very nicely. I've had to stake everything peppers tend to get a little floppy, especially on the end of this bed, it tends to be a little bit more shady here than in other places in the garden. And so they get tall and the wind blows and they fall over. And I just bought, I'll put a picture up on the screen. I just bought these tomato clips off of Amazon and I don't love them, but they're decent. Um, and they were a pretty good price. And so I'm using those this year. I have a nasturtium tucked in over in the corner. I like to tuck flowers in wherever I have a little bit of extra space. I'm also standing in a comfrey patch. Once you plant comfrey, you will never get rid of it. This comfrey has been here for 10 years and it's a great chop and drop. And you can see around the bottom of this tree, this little um, pearmain apple tree, that that's what we did. We chopped everything and dropped it. Comfrey has very deep tap roots. So it goes way down into the soil and it brings up a lot of minerals. And then those minerals, when you chop and drop, are now on the surface of the soil and can break down and feed the plant. So it's a, it's, it's a, can be a pain, but it is a lovely chop and drop perennial plant to have more lovely carmines here. And these will turn red when they're ripe and they are by far my favorite eating sweet pepper. They're just incredible, I love them. It is a hybrid, so not something you can save seed from and get it to come true to type. Here we have shishitos. I have two shishito peppers in here, and this one is just starting to produce. I've eaten a small handful off of these, and then I have one on the other side that's a little further behind. Here's our Rosa Bianca eggplant, and you can see this one's starting to get fat. So we're starting to, we've had some pollination in there. We're starting to get a, an eggplant coming. That's gonna be fun. This is my runner bean and squash bed. And then I have some flowers thrown into the center. Every year, I think I'm gonna plant summer squash on the corners and have them spill over. And then every year the plants have their own plans and instead of spilling over, they climb into the bed. <laughs> so I've been pruning leaves off of the mist, off the side of this, trying to keep it from completely shading out the center of this bed, because I do have some flowers in there that I would like to have survive. Um, this is my favorite zucchini. Um, it is a, a different variety and it is absolutely fantastic. Um, look at that blossom. I love it. It's a little firmer, and so I find it to be a better eating quality, but the plants are absolutely monstrous. They are really, really huge. And I need to, this is asparagus here that's gone to fern. I really need to prune this down because part of the reason the plants don't wanna go that way is because um, there's too much shade over there. But we're working on it. So a couple of zucchinis, and then in the middle I have patty pans. And you can see I have one tiny little patty pan there. So that's fun. And in here is, flower-wise, I have 
hollyhock, scabiosa, snapdragon. Um, and they, they're looking a little sideways because I did just prune this yesterday. Growing up our trellis, these are a Sri Lankan long bean. And they're a little chewed on. I'm not sure why this particular bean is popular with the bugs and the other ones are not, but clearly a different variety. Um, so they're getting a little chewed on. And then Scarlet Runner Bean is next to it. Look at these Scarlet Runner Beans, you guys. I haven't grown these in years because we tend to have really hot weather in the summer and pole beans take a long time to start producing. And so the two aren't very compatible. But I love the Scarlet Runner Beans just for the flowers. And it's been years since I've grown them and I'm just so tickled to have them again this year. And look how they have climbed all the way up this trellis. I love it, it's so awesome. And Scarlet Runner Beans are fun. They're obviously beautiful, but you can eat them green. You can eat them when they're um, mature and pop them out of the pot and eat them that way, or you can eat them dried. So basically they're kind of a triple th threat in terms of edibility, which is awesome. And then this is my Italian yellow broad bean, green bean that I got from my cousin and he got the seeds from Italy and they are starting to climb through there as well. So that's super fun. That's gonna be really fun to get some of those and try them. And then in this part of the bed, I have bush beans and I have three different varieties in here. So there's Maxibel, there's Providence. Oh, hello, little dragonfly. Let's see if we can get a shot of him. See him sitting there. And then there's also some dragon tongue in here. And then on the far end, we've got some edamame, so some soybeans. So lots of different beans going on this year, um, more than I've done in the past in terms of, of uh, edible green beans, so fun. This is summer savory, and I use it in a herb mix called Herbs de Provence. It's kind of like thyme and rosemary had a baby. It tends to be very brittle at the base, so I have it staked just so that the wind doesn't blow it over and break it off because that seems to happen to me every year. And then a little tiny one here that's just getting going. I'm surprised it survived. I threw it in there thinking it wasn't gonna make it. Um, this is anise hyssop, a really lovely um, hyssop for tea. And then this is toothache plant in here. Also calls, called buzz buttons and they are blooming. I have yet to eat one. I need to give them a try. That's really fun. And this one, this one plant was an early germinator and then the other ones were later. And so I've got one plant that's way ahead. It's a sprawler, which I had not realized when I planted it. So it's definitely sprawling out, which is going to be interesting in this bed. A um, little pocket of flowers. I've got marigolds, nasturtiums, this is related to the anise hyssop. Um, this is the only one that I had that actually survived, a little finicky to germinate. Um, a salvia that's starting to get big. I'm not sure if this is gonna bloom this year or not. I've got these tucked away in a bunch of different places. Good germination, but it could be a two-year plant where it grows um, a rosette the first year and then doesn't flower until the second year. And then a different species of marigold. These were from a seed swap and I had no idea what I was getting. And that's the only one of that one that I ended up with germinating, but very pretty, very fun. Over in this bed, I have, oh my gosh, there's so many bees in that flower. This is a bread seed poppy. So the kind of poppy that you would get on like a poppy mm. seed bagel. And they are such pretty blossoms and you can see most of the blooming is mm. done at this point we're starting to actually get the poppy heads and I just let those dry and then they're ready to harvest when they're completely dry but I love how many bees are in here there's a party in the poppy here I have this pretty little flower that looks like a little bit like love in the mist is nigella and so this is the same genus but different species as love in a mist nigella this is the Indian nigella that you use the seed as a spice and it's blooming 
Um, these plants aren't as robust as I was hoping for. Um, I had a tough time germinating them and I don't think I quite got the timing right. And then this is, it's called Hunan pop bean and it is a type of garbanzo bean. And I have three plants in here um, and I have some really, really old seed. I have a terrible time growing this. Um, I have a soil fungus that tends to knock it out really quickly. And so I threw some old seed in a seed starter tray just to um, give it a try to see if I could get it to germinate. And they're doing quite well. They don't show any signs of the fungus. So hopefully I'll get some new beans on this at least so that I can keep the, the species going. It's a very fun, um, it's one of those ones you can dry roast in a pan and eat like a snack. Um, this is beets that are looking quite robust. They've really had a growth spurt just in the last couple of weeks. And actually I see one over there that's just starting to form an actual beet. I got these in super late, so I was surprised at how well they're doing. But we've had a, a nice cool spring. We had a hot spell briefly, and then it's cooled off and it's been great for growing things like this. And then this is my carrot bed, which is doing lovely. They're not quite ready to harvest. Somebody was asking the other day, how do you know when carrots are ready? And the answer is you pull a couple and see if they're ready. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. Um, you just, when they're forming roots, they're finished. Um, and you can, they will get to a certain point and then generally stop growing. And so you can hold them um, in the bed for a long time if you like. These have probably got another three weeks or so before they're big enough to actually do anything with. But that's exciting. And then we have herb bed here. This is celery. And I think this is slug damage that's happening in here. I need to put a little more slug bait down. I had a lot of leaves in these beds as mulch and it is perfect habitat for slugs and so I think I've had some slug issues. I generally don't eat the, the celery leaves anyway so I'm not too worried about it. But the plant itself, they're looking good. And my plan is to chop and freeze enough celery that I can get through the winter without having to buy, buy celery at the grocery store so that's exciting. Dill, and I did harvest a bunch of fronds a couple of weeks ago and have dried them to replenish my stock of dill, dill weed. I don't eat a lot of dill and so we don't use a ton of it. And then I'm just gonna let these go to seed and I will use the seed in pickles and spice mixes and that kind of thing. This is cilantro, also getting ready to go to seed. Cilantro is a cool season plant. You can see this one's flopped over and it's leaning out of the bed. And so it's very hard to get the timing right where you have cilantro when you also have ripe tomatoes. Um, what I ended up doing, and I have a video coming out on this that's gonna be really short and quick, is I just picked a whole bunch of these leaves before when I saw it was starting to do this, where you see that close, fine growth and you know it's getting ready to go to seed. I just came in and picked a whole bunch of the leaves and chopped them and froze them. So I'll have them in the freezer. It's not gonna be as good as fresh cilantro, but it is much better than dried. Dried cilantro doesn't taste like anything. It just doesn't dry well. This is holy basil, which is blooming and lovely. And I'll probably dry a bunch of that for tea this year. Thai basil, also beautiful. I mostly grow this for the pollinators. The bees absolutely love plants in this family. And so it's always fun. And then sweet basil, which I've pruned up a little bit, pinched back. You can see there, there's a, a stem that I pinched off. You have to keep basil pinched or it goes to seed. And so you've got to get in there and pick it at least probably twice a week this time of year. That is an asparagus fern that is coming up in the middle of my bed. Um, this is zatar, which is not as robust as I wished it was. And I need to get in here and prune it back so that it puts on some more vegetative growth. And then next to that is marjoram, which is also going to seed gloriously rather than a lot of green growth, but smells amazing. And then in the end here is parsley. And I'm gonna pick a whole bunch of this and do a parsley pesto coming up pretty soon. I'll probably do a video on that. And you see the same damage on the leaves of this that you did on the celery. Parsley is in the same family as celery. They're both in the parsley family. And so clearly the slugs have a preference for that. And then lastly, this is kind of my greens bed. Wow, this kale is just monstrous. So this is red Russian kale. And I have harvested this two or three times already. 
So I'm getting a ton of leaves off of this. They tend to get aphidy. Um, and actually, surprisingly, I haven't seen much in the way of aphids this spring. So that's good. Um, but this will go through the summer if I keep it picked. It's a little bug eaten. It's a little damaged. Again, this is probably slug, um, but certainly nothing that is going to harm anything. And then tucked in on the end here, I have a couple of Swiss chard and I'm still having problems with the leaf miner. That's what is causing this look here. And if we could hold that up to the light, you would be able to see the actual bugs in there. I keep picking the damaged leaves off. I've been spraying with neem and with pyrethrins, and I think I need to switch over to a spinosad, which is also an organic spray. Um, it has a little longer residual, and maybe I can, I'm not spraying enough, clearly, and so maybe I can catch it. Um, man, they are just thick in there this year. It's terrible. The last of my lettuce, everything's pretty much been picked. So this is a romaine that is going to seed and I'm just letting it. Um, I've got enough and it's, I'll probably pick that and just feed it to the chickens. This was an extra collard that I threw in there when I took out some of the lettuce. So that'll be, that'll get, this will get huge um, over the course of the winter. There's an extra kale that I threw in there as well. This is the lacinato kale or the dino kale. I've also harvested this quite a bit. It's looking really good this year as well. Slightly milder flavor. Getting ready to do a video on a kale and frizzled garbanzo bean dish that I've kind of, I'm kind of combining multiple recipes from multiple sources. I think that's going to be really fun, so I'm excited about that. This is another patty pan squash that I had this extra space at the end of this bed once I pulled something else out, and so I threw that in there. I figure that can hopefully spill this way, but it might end up spilling that way because that seems to be what happens. And then I had one extra kohlrabi that surprisingly was in a pot for a very, very long time. And it looks gorgeous. This is the best kohlrabi I grew all spring. There isn't a mark on it. It's beautiful and it's perfect right now. I should just pick it. Um, these are some onions. Onions are biannual, so they flower on the second year. These were, um, I think they're just yellow onions. I think they're my yellow storage onions. Yes, that's right, okay. So these are yellow storage onions that were starting to sprout and I just had some room at the end of this bed where some peas had not germinated and so I threw them in here. They will go to the seed, they will pollinate each other and I'll save the seed and be able to grow more onions next year. This is the last of my peas. I had uh, pod peas in this section and they are all finished. And I learned that my dogs were eating the pod, so awesome. I've got to figure out a way to fence this so that they stay out of here because they've discovered that they can eat the, the peas. And I have a hard enough time growing peas without them helping me. These are a sugar snap. I'm sure this is fair game for a dog. Um, it's late for peas. We're almost at the end of June. It's getting, it's gonna get way too hot. And they, you can see they've kind of spilled into the underneath here. These are very, very tall. So my trellis is not quite as big as it needs to be, but I've gotten a handful off of there and they're delicious. I like to just snack on them in the garden. This cover, I just tied this on. It's an old shower curtain. Um, but what turned out to be really kind of fortuitous is it has magnets on the corners because for people that have old, um, cast iron tubs. And so it actually sticks on the edge of the bed. And so it's pretty much stayed in place. And I got probably an extra couple weeks out of the lettuce that was in here that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise because I was giving it some shade and some cooling. And then I just literally tied it onto the trellis for the peas. So that was kind of a fun, you know, use what you've got kind of method. Um, and then here's my green stalk. I also learned that part of the problem with me not getting any strawberries is the dogs have been eating them. And so I get one that's just about ready to pick and I'm gonna give it one more day and then it's disappeared and it's because the dogs are coming in and eating them off of the thing. So yeah, gotta figure out how to fence the dogs out of the garden because they are not earning their keep here. But uh, strawberries on the bottom, uh, sweet peas, which I'm hoping are gonna be glorious when they bloom and then some random extra nasturtiums. I had good germination on nasturtiums this year on the top part. And I have to admit, I'm really enjoying the flowers and I really wish, what I should do is take this apart, but it would be super heavy. Um, I wish I had flopped it and I had the, the flowers on the bottom and the strawberries on the top so they were out of reach of the dogs, but you know, live and learn. Another flower bed here. 
these are calendula of different varieties and I just keep deadheading them and throwing the, the flowers into the bed. But these have given me a lot of joy. They've really been beautiful. This is my washing station, kind of tucked in under this volunteer uh, black walnut tree. And so if I'm washing produce, um, I have a sink, outdoor sink set up here and I can wash things. And then I've got some of my organic sprays over there as well. And then I have a worm bin that's out here where I can put food scraps and things. So yeah, got some good stuff. And let's go out to the big garden and see what's happening out there. We got lots of good stuff.